Hi, today I'd like to talk about strange silverware. Okay, so in the 1880s, there was the big silver strikes and there was you know, many more uh, rich people to buy silver and so they created all these patterns and they created all these unusual pieces in the patterns. Some were successful, some were not. And so I'd like to talk about some of the stranger pieces that they made in sterling silver. Okay, so first one's actually before the, the big silver strikes of the 1880s, and this is from the 1850s, and it's a toast tongs. Pretty cool mechanical piece. Put your thumb on here, and then you grab your piece of to toast with it. It's got this kind of weird little ram on the, on the end of it. Uh, doesn't make much sense, but I guess it worked, so, you know, but never saw one like it. Okay. Speaking of toast, one of my favorite pieces is the Tiffany Chrysanthemum Toast Fork. So really neat little webbing in here, but a, to a fork made just for toast. Okay, another piece of Tiffany Chrysanthemum is the asparagus fork. Uh, they couldn't quite make up their mind how to serve asparagus. Uh, do you use a tongs? Do you use um, you know some sort of a fork? Do you use a server? And this is one of the ideas, and it's kind of unusual with these crossed sort of leaf-shaped tines. You know, it's different. Okay, bombier spoons. Okay, the original idea was for fruit cell that drains. So you lift your fruit out of your fruit bowl, but then they also used it for other things, like they put candy and nuts. You'd go, go around and give your guests candy or nuts, or you would just have it sit on your table and have uh, people get candy and that's out of the, the bowl of it. So, so great looking piece, kind of strange name, not real useful, but pretty. Okay, another one, Claret Ladle. Okay, in Bill Hood's book, Tiffany Sterling Flatware, he said he couldn't really figure out from the research what they use a Claret Ladle for. You know, everyone says they took a barrel of claret, and they would take a sample of the claret or of the fruit. You know, I guess that's what they used it for. You see more of these than you'd think for something that obscure of a use, but, you know, not very useful. Here's a cool little piece. It is a lobster fork. I mean, someone was very ingenious here where they created a, a, a fork that looks like a lobster claw. You know, cute. In England, they eat a lot of marrow. In America, not so much. And um, American marrow scoops are extremely rare. We have maybe three or four of them in our whole inventory. And here's one in Old Colonial. So uh, really stretching the limits of silverware use. In Chantilly, they came out with something for everything. And here's a really unusual set. Uh, it's a duck set. So you would use this narrow spoon to get the stuffing out of a duck. You really need that. That's something you really got to have. Okay, not many people said so because it, they're extremely rare. A piece that I usually ask customers, well, what's this for? And the answer is very seldom right, is this spoon. And this spoon is a Saratoga chip spoon, which is used to serve potato chips. Eh, you, know, you know, maybe Doritos would be okay too. All right, one of the most unusual pieces, and it's quite ingenious, is the salad tongs in Persian by Tiffany. Uh, why this didn't catch, I don't, I don't know. It was a great idea in the 1870s when they made it. What's really neat about it is you can just take it apart and then you can have a salad spoon and fork, and it, it goes back together just as easily. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, they gave you hints as far as what the use of a, of a particular spoon was. I think all of you could probably figure this one out. It's, it's tough, but I, I think you might be able to. Uh, this has these peas on the, on the uh, top here, and then it's got pea vines down here. What could this possibly be used for? It's a pea spoon. So it's a very uh, popular, I think really well thought out piece of Tiffany Vine. But 
you can't always take those hints. So like here is this piece with this great big bug on it. So some of you might be tempted to think, is that a bug server? The answer is no, that is not what this is. This is an ice spoon where they put this pretty mean looking bug on it just for decoration. And you're also on the wrong track if you have any thoughts that this dog has anything to do with this ice cream server, it has nothing to do. It's just decoration. It's not like the pea spoon where it's the, the use you can figure out from the handle. No, that's the wrong, the wrong idea. Okay, and then we have probably the strangest set we've ever had. I have, This is my second one of these. I've only had two in the last 30 years. And the story I've heard about it is an artist came up with this pattern in New York in the 1950s. And it was really, um, you know, strange. Anyway, strange things seemed to get a following and then a designer, Arm, Arm, Arm came up back with it in the 1990s and sold it at Neiman Marcus. So the pattern is called bones, and I'll show you a few pieces. So this, I don't know why they call this pattern bones, but here's the first piece. The, it is a pasta server with a backbone. And here is a salad set. You know, it's, it's really cool, it's really different. It, it, this would be really fabulous for Halloween. It'd be really good for a few doctors who are bone specialists. And then here's the set. These knives are really heavy and they're really special. I think they're really cool. Someone really had a good imagination. Here's, here's the fork in this pattern. You know, again, you got a pair of bones there. Here's a soup spoon in it. I hear they even made knife rests and other pieces, but I've only had the two sets ever. I think someone really used a good imagination, but it does have to be classified as strange. Thank you. <laughs>